right, six o'clock. Um, Jody's hit record. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Central Vermont Career Center School Board. Um, it is January 8th, 2024. Um, and I'd like to welcome Sonia Spalding to the board as the um, BUUSD representative. So nice to see you and meet you. I'm Jill Remick. I'm the Montpelier Roxbury um, appointee on the board. Thank you very much. So um, can I introduce folks and you can, and I'll call on folks to introduce yourselves to Sonia? Okay, great. I'm just gonna go in order of what I see on my screen. Um, Floor, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, Sonia. <laughs> Floor, yeah, Sonia and I go way back, so. Okay, <laughs> no introduction. Okay. Yeah, and I actually she's helping in the VSBA right now. She also took my seat at the VSBA. Oh my gosh. After begging. No, because she's awesome. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Floor. Um, Jason. Yeah, hi, Sonia. I'm Jason Monaco. I'm from uh, Cabot School. Great, thanks. Um, Jim. All right, Jim Alavarge from uh, Harwood. Thanks, Jim. And you know Jody. Um, um, Steph, now you got it. I got you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephanie Olson. I take the minutes for the board. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, Guy. Welcome, Sonia. Great to see you. Uh, Lyman. Hi, I'm Lyman Cass. I'm the uh, vice chair and at-large member from Montpelier Roxbury. Great, thank you. Terry? I'm Terry Steele and I'm the at-large for Washington Central. Thanks, Terry. Jana? Hi. Hi, Sonia. I'm Jana Osman. I'm the representative from Twinfield. Thanks, Jana. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Lehman. I'm the business manager. You might remember me from BUSD. I was in the business office a few years ago. Thanks, Michelle. And Ashley. Hi, Sonia. I'm Ashley. I'm the Warren rep on the Harwood board. Great. Thanks, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for, for hopping on. We were sad to lose Giuliano, although we're not losing him. We're actually gaining him as an instructor, which is great news. So thanks for filling in that spot. Um, does anybody have any amendments that you'd like to see to the agenda? Lots to cover. Jody? I don't really have amendments, but the student that we have let me know that he had an interview tonight, so he wouldn't be able to attend. And the program that was going to present tonight, the instructor is out sick um, and reached out over the weekend. So we're not going to be able to do either one of those, unfortunately. Okay. Thanks for the update and good luck for to our student. And um, and it's always more fun to do the program visits in person. So we'll we'll get another chance. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, so another piece that we do, Sonia, that you probably do as well, we have board agreements and norms. They're just sort of attached to our agenda that we just revisit. Um, this is a fantastic board to work with. I've only been a board member of anything for a couple of years, um, but this is a pretty amazing group. A lot of respect for each other and positive energy towards um, doing the best we can for our students and staff at the Career Center. Um, but those were included in the packet as well. And Jill is extraordinary. Thank you. You have nothing to compare me to, so I must be doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best board chair the Career Center has ever had, and it's a year and a half of existence. I'll second Thank that. <laughs> Thank you very much. That means a lot. I appreciate that. I'm trying. Um, all right, and it doesn't look like we have members of the public. Um, Orca Media, thank you so much for being here so that um, this can be recorded and shared with the public. We really appreciate it. One of our goals as a board is definitely to get the word out, right? You know, we're sort of this best kept secret, right, in Central Vermont that provides so much incredible training and um, support for our students. Our students have a really great experience here and um, often can either stay in the community or come back to the community. So 
um, the more that we can get the word out about the good stuff happening here, um, the better. So appreciate that. Um, okay, uh, next on our agenda, <clears throat> I'm looking for a motion to approve the meeting minutes from December 11th. Um, Terry, go ahead. I'm listed as absent and present. <laughs> That's I noticed that. So I, 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 just, present. <laughs> I just caught that as well. I will okay. um, I will fix that because you were at that meeting. Thanks, Stephanie. That's how powerful you are, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> or not powerful. I'm like <laughs> Well, I don't know. I I would say you could be in three places at once. You're powerful. <laughs> so I'll Thank second you. Terry's motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Thanks for as amended. <laughs> Right. Any other comments or um, corrections to the meeting minutes? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So we have approved our minutes from December. Um, next up, we do have two executive session meeting minutes that we need uh, a motion to approve as well. I'll make a motion to approve both. Thank you. Do I have a second? I think I'll I was second. missed on the. 1211 executive session as well. Okay. I don't think I'm listed on there. Okay. Just right. Did you, you find that Steph, Stephanie? Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Um, any further corrections or comments to the meeting, the executive session minutes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. All right. Great. Thanks, everyone. All right. Um, so as Jody mentioned, we do have student appointees to the board. There's a student leadership program, and they send um, one and sometimes two students to some of the meetings to sit in and provide perspective. They're really impressive students, and it's been a neat addition to the board. Um, so we'll miss them, but an interview is an important thing to be at. Um, and we will do the program presentation on plumbing and heating another meeting. Um, so next up, we have our policies, our second reading of um, several policies. Um, as a relatively new board, we have a lot of policies to adopt, and um, a lot of them have been sort of amended or um, largely carried over from the previous governance structure. Um, were there any particular changes or questions about any of those policies that people wanted to ask about? Laura? Uh, Jill, I just wanted to, uh, we talked uh, with the steering committee about adding a motion uh, before we started the, the conversation on policy to have, uh, so I would like to make a motion to approve that we have an audit by the VSBA on our policies so that we can get under schedule in June because they don't do one in the, uh, during the legislative session. So we said we would present that to the board today. So I just wanted to add, we can do it now or later, but just wanted to add that to, to our conversation on policy. Okay, great. Thank you. Do I have a second? I can so second that. Great. Thanks, Lana. And um, Sonia? Um, I just had some very basic questions because I was reading it. Um, I've seen all of these policies before, but um, some of the the policies mentioned principal and schools and i wondered if that was going if those should be revised or if you've already addressed that in a conversation so these were um you probably recognize them because we just continued them from very unified union school district and when i see those i have updated them and so i would love for you to point those out so we can make those amendments the other two pieces um, in this that are important i think are there was a request for the model policy on restraint and seclusion so i included that and there was a request for information about the scholarships that cbcc gives at the end of year awards and so those were included in the packet they're not linked to the agenda but they were in that full packet so those are two components that we may need to talk about. Thank you. So Jody, my question, do you want to know those now before we pass, the, before we make a motion to approve them? Yes, okay. Um, 
Is it okay if I go through them? Okay. Um, so in A33, the first one, uh, the second bullet has uh, the last word is principal. School visits will follow prior notification to the principal. Um, my question about that one as well was the first bullet is board members will complete background checks. Is that um, something that happens in other districts and does that just transfer over to this district because we're all sending schools? Which is a completely separate subject, but. That's a good question. I'm staring sort of blankly at Michelle, wondering about that. I don't think I had to do a background check to serve on Montpelier Roxbury. So that's a good, that's a really good question. We yeah, don't yeah. volunteer or go into the school for anything. We do the background check, but that's a good. I didn't for sure. Yeah. So practice as of right now is uh, the only people that have background checks are employees, volunteers, and anybody that's going to be with a student. None of our board members have been background checked just for being a board member. So Sonia's question is a good one. Do we want to um, remove that from the policy if that we're not in, we're not planning on carrying out that practice? And I don't know if the SBA has the recommendations about whether that's doesn't sound like that's standard practice because we've got six different boards represented here. Or? So, Jill, I was just going to say, we have a different motion on the floor right now. Like, maybe we want to let's finalize the audit and then move into the policies. I was trying to text you, but my texts are not going through quickly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. In my because I'm in the office, I, come, I didn't make it back home. After the okay, so sorry, um, just, we have a we have a motion on the floor from floor that has been seconded to ask the BSBA to conduct a policy audit for us this year. Um, does that have a cost associated with it? No. Oh. No, it doesn't have a cost associated with it. So okay. it's a it's a service they provide, and we could be the first one in the queue for. For, for June, and I think all of this that is coming up right now will help us. Okay, great. Um, are there any comments or questions? Well, this may be out of order, um, but since we're talking about VSBA, I don't know if we ever finished our evaluation process for Jody. Is that like a dangling piece that we've left out there that we never completed? That's it. We, we can, let's bring that in the steering committee, uh, Jan, Jenna. And I think they gave you back what we had and that what is left is right, the report. But I, I, I we finalized everything and Jody was going to create goals from it. So we did everything. Like what we need to do is this year now. But okay. we did everything to the very end and, and Jody was going to work on goals. And that's how we left it. Okay. <laughs> so it was Thank finalized. You. It was finalized. Okay, great. Yeah, that's what I thought. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, let's take a vote on the motion to have the VSBA audit our policies. Um, we have a motion. We have a second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, great. So that motion carries. Thank you, Floor, for bringing that up. All right. Um, shall we get back to Sonia? You were, you were walking through some of the specific pieces. We'll happily pop back into that. Sure. Um, do you, I, and I apologize, I don't know how you guys do this, but do you usually approve them all at once? Because I can make a motion to approve them all for second reading. I'd be happy to do that. Um, and then we could have a discussion about them individually if you'd like. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'll make that motion to approve them all for second reading. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> Thanks, Ashley. Okay, great. And so now we'll have the discussion. So for the first one, the the A33, I, I wonder if you should just strike the first bullet. That is definitely um, something that our board members are expected to do, which is um, have a background check in the BUUSD. But if it makes sense for you to, because we're all different districts, maybe we just scratch that. Thank you. And Michelle, did you have a comment on that part? Uh, yeah, it was adopted when we moved over from BUUSD, but they have since rescinded that policy. It's no longer a policy for them. 
them. Okay. So I, I don't know if, and it's not uh, recommended or required by the VSBA. Okay. Thanks. Great. So Sonia, were you saying your board is is removing that requirement or is keeping that requirement? No, we still have to do background checks, but we I think we rescinded this entire policy because I think it fell under a different policy, I think. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So are we looking for a motion to do that? To take it out? Or is she making a motion to do that? I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good, I think we, I think we make, we're, so we've had the motion and it's been seconded for like approving them as a group. So now I think in the discussion, I think Jody is capturing these um, where Stephanie is in our minutes so that it can come back for a third reading with those corrections. But yeah, if we, as a board do want to strike that, we should, we should express that. Sounds like we don't have any reason to keep it in. That was a good catch. What word is being used other than principal if you're taking principal out of, of this second. is for requiring us to get background checks. No, no, no. I know that. We're gonna we're gonna cut that out. I, I get that. Okay. But I Director. believe Sonia mentioned something about the second bullet point and the word principal coming out. And I'm just curious what word were we using instead? Director. Got it. Thank you. So my one question about that is if we're just said we passed a motion to have the VSBA audit our um, our policies, are we taking something out that we should run by them or is find out? I mean, it's uh, clearly it's not typical. I would be inclined to take it out, I, but I don't know if that's if that if they would say, well, maybe you need that in there. I don't know. No, so we have so we have a motion to pass these for second reading separately from that. So we it's within oh, okay. our purview to to take it out if we'd like to. They if they if they recommend down the road that we should put it in there, we can revisit it. But I think it I think it's within our within our purview to take it out if we'd like. Okay, then let's pass that. I'll second the her motion. Okay. Um, would you like me to keep going for principal in schools? Sure. Okay. The next one is A34 um, under relations with, it says principal. Um, it should be director. Um, and then under number two is uh, instead, it says from school principals, and I assume that should just be from the director. And then on number three, it says uh, the need to maintain a distinction between the administrative role of the principal and the policy making role of the board. Great catches, thank you. Um, I don't have anything for, sorry, my tablet's not catching up. Um, the next one, I wondered under C33, there's a part that's in red uh, regarding education quality standards that apply to CTE. Are you replacing that with the other paragraph since you're <clears throat> a CTE school instead of and, and there's a question, do we want to revise this one or remove? So I'm not sure whether you were going to swap those out. Um, I'll just run through all of them and then you guys can discuss. Under C34 on page four, 3.7, it says each school. 3.8, it says each school. 3.9, it says uh, each school. Um, I think you have a sample from the VSBA, so I didn't review that one. I think that's just a sample. Um, on C42 under school property, the second line says the principal has authority to decide whether to grant or withhold permission. Um, under C43, under sexually transmitted infections and pregnancy prevention, it talks about a SHAC committee, and I didn't know if you had a SHAC committee, so I was curious about that. Um, under D30, 
For number two, it says out-of-state field trips require board approval. I don't know if you actually do that. We don't actually approve out-of-state um, trips. We're just notified of them. And so since this carried over, I don't, I want to make sure that you know that. Um, and then under number six, there is on the second line, it says school nurse and a principal. So that should be changed as well. Um, and then under D32, page two, under number one, um, I don't know if this is the case in all of your districts, but we've um, changed the master agreement to be the collective bargaining agreement instead of calling it a master agreement. And so we might just want to change that language as well. Um, and that might be all of it. I think that's everything. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> No, thank you for your close attention to that. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, I do think I, I do recall we as a board have approved an out of state. We've, we've I can think of two out of state travels. So I do those do come before the board. Um, cosmetology went to something out of state and then we have our annual um, Skills USA crew. Um, so yeah, I think that's right. And then um, uh, regarding the education quality standards, that was a good catch. I think we do want to keep, um, even if it's just the piece that says the education quality standards that apply to CTE are here and link to the agency website. So we have that in here. That makes sense to me, but I'm open to other thoughts. Um, were there other pieces that folks had reactions to or Jody that you wanted to clarify? The Oh, the sexual health um, and prevention committee. Do we have one of those in our faculty? Okay. That one out. And I'm sorry, I can't write things down because of my hand, so I didn't write all those down. Were there others that Sonia had mentioned that we need to clear up? We don't have that um, committee, but we share the nurse and they provide the same information. So I wonder if it still makes sense. Does the uh, health um, advisory committee at Spalding still do those recommendations, Sonia? Then I think because we, we pay for the nurse, um, a portion of the nurse, and we still, we use the same, they provide the same stuff for us, then maybe we do keep that there. Okay. Um, so Jody, re oh, Jason, you had your hand up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just back at that first page. Oh, sorry, I lost my screen. That first page that Sonia started talking about. Okay, I'll get to it. Yeah, it says uh, it was C A33. And the first policy, it's school members to become familiar with their schools, its programs, and the needs. That sounds a little weird to me. Should it be school? Yes. And the implementation of individual board members may visit the school or the career center. Great. Thank that's you. Yeah, I think that's all I saw. Okay. Jody, were you able to capture those or do you want? Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Were there any other um, comments or um, discussions or questions about any of these policies? Guy?
Guy, did you have a, a question? Oh, sorry. No, you're good. I guess it helps to turn on the uh, microphone. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to remember my history about the background checks. I think it was done under the auspices that uh, you know school board members would be you know coming in contact with students on some level. Uh, you know, going in and out of schools. Uh, you know, similar to volunteers and, and you know that type of thing. Uh, you know, certainly, I think uh, you know, remote. Uh, you know, COVID has altered that a little bit. Um, so, you know, Michelle is saying it's not a required policy. Um, and I, I would, I would be fine with it. I mean. Got about 38 out there so so far i've been good but you know i can always screw it up um ashley and then jana i'm struggling with my looking at the policy but i was curious on the restraint um and seclusion policy if there's a does the first of all is it are we doing many restraints and seclusions at the career center? Okay. And if there are any, are we going to hear about them? Are they reported to this board? I was just curious, what's the reporting if there is a, a, some situation like that? There is a requirement to report to the state if there is a situation like that. We have not had one while I was here. There was nearly one last year, but it didn't get to that level. Okay, thank you. And Jana? Bill, I'm wondering under functional behavioral assessment, functional um, behavior or functional assessment is now a part of any special education evaluation as it was changed in the rules and regulations that became that were enacted in July. So I don't know if this is separate from that. And if that was the case, does that mean that it would require a special education evaluation if one felt that a functional behavioral assessment needed to be, was in order? Uh, we would recommend or request that, but we do as we're not an LEA, so we would not be doing any functional behavioral assessments. So, so functional assessment is part of all evaluations now, anyway. Right. So hopefully that's, I mean, that's not in our purview. I think we just have this policy that okay. we adopted from another district. We have a model policy. We can. Okay. We can either accept what we have and move forward, or we can change it, or we can move forward and wait for the audit. Okay, let's wait for the audit then. Otherwise, I would say it's redundant if it's part of what is in practice based on previous legislation. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments or questions on the policies? All right, really appreciate that work on that. Um, so we have a motion that's been seconded. So this would be just um, for approving these for um, to come back at the next meeting for third reading with the edits that we discussed today. Um, so we have the motion and the second. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, great. So we have approved those for second reading. So they'll be back with edits for third reading. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, oh, and then we have that we already voted on the BSBA policy audit. Okay. So now we'll go to committee reports. Do we have a, an update from the finance committee? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so there were a couple of actions, but we met on uh, January 2nd and we looked at, uh, we review our budget development with Michelle. Uh, we, um, we, we moved to recommend that uh, that we approve the budget uh, as, uh, is, as submitted to us, and we'll get to that a little later, and I'll let Jill do that. 
the reflection that we had with uh, with Jody about her presentations around all the schools, they all went well, and the the questions were mostly, you know, really everybody very supportive of the career center and the work that we're doing. Yeah, we looked at the we looked at the warning too, and we uh, approved uh, approved. We recommended that we approve the warning as it was submitted. We will get to that too, and then uh, uh, Michelle shared a little bit about what is going on uh, with the audit and brought us. Uh, I don't know if she has any other updates, but they're continuing to work on the audit right now. It hasn't been as smooth as they wanted, but basically because we're doing a. A different a system, a different accounting system that we have now in our district, as you guys heard before. Um, and then we we're still looking to there. There's there was some homework that we were doing to make sure to. Uh, there's not clear how we have separated our assets we with BUUSD. So we're still doing some work on that. Uh, I saw Michelle here, so she can jump in if it needed. Uh, we review the warrants, which you all get. Uh, and then most important, we looked at the annual report and I believe it's, it's included in the packet, the annual report. Uh, and um, we worked on, on that and on the letter. Uh, I don't know, any questions? Otherwise we should move to the action items, Jill. Yeah, any questions, additions? Great. Okay, um, thanks, Floor. So our first action would be um, a motion to approve the budget as presented. So I can make a motion to approve the budget as presented. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Guy. Thanks, Guy. And just a reminder, and especially for folks who might be watching, um, the way the Career Center budget works is we have our budget for our operations for our program. And then um, the sending schools provide tuition payments using a state-based um, formula. So just want folks to be really clear as we pass the budget that our budget, the Career Center Vermont Career Center's budget is divided up among the spending towns as an, and is already included in their budgets as well. So this is not an additional cost. This is how it has always been. That This is actually our the Career Center budget, but it is already reflected and baked into our sending schools budgets. Um, Guy? Uh, Jody, uh, have you had more recent information about comparative um, tuition rates? I have not gotten any updates from any of the other um, centers. However, because we got the information we needed as far as our FTEs, we can tell you, I think the budget increased 11%, but our tuition increased less than 1%. Well, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. So we have a motion on the floor to approve the budget as presented. Um, and I think we have a second. Yeah, we have a second from Guy. Any further questions or comments? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Any opposed? Okay, great. So we have approved our budget. So um, that allows Jody to send the annual report to the printer if she hasn't already. That will be the budget that's reflected on our ballot language, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so thank you, Michelle and Jody and Floor, for all your work on, on getting that to where it is. Um, it also reflects our first um, collective bargaining agreements. So. Uh, all right. So relatedly, um, we are looking for approval of our announced tuition. And Jody, would you explain this a little bit? So this we don't have a we don't have a choice in what our tuition ends up being. Is that right? We have a calculation that we get from the agency of education, or am I conflating two things? Uh, Michelle, do you think it would help to share the worksheet on this one? <laughs> Basically, we set our budget. So that's the choice we're making, right? If we're saying this is what it's going to take us to run the Central Vermont Career Center and to meet the needs of our students next year, that base amount, so that $4,604,000 that we have set aside for our budget, that's the choice we made. Then we take um, a percentage of the base rate 
figure out what that is. So 87% of the base rate of 13,063, which is what we're anticipating based on what the state had told us previously. Then we have $11,365 per student that we get on behalf from, directly from the Ed Fund. We have, they told us we had 184 and we were originally assuming we had 180 students. So we have 184 FTEs for that six semester average. And then the rest of the worksheet basically puts in some support, like the ed support grant, the state tuition, the state salary assistance that we get, which is always a year behind, and some other components. And it, and we put in that FTEs to be billed and we fit in that 11,365 on behalf to figure out what is the remaining amount that the sending schools will be billed. So they'll be billed $7,537 per FTE based on their six semester average sending to us. And then you put all that together. If you take that and um, the 11,365 and 184 students, then our tuition is 18,901 per student. And then we can compare that to previous years. So it's this worksheet where we fill in a bunch of numbers and, and then it spits out a few things for us so that we have that. But our choice was in setting that budget where we believe we need it. Great, really appreciate that. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions or comments about that? Does that make sense? All right, so do I have a motion to approve the announced tuition? So move. I move. Okay. okay. Moved by Jana, second by Floor. We should say the number though, Michelle, I have it here, but I just wanna make sure that we are saying the right. Let me look. So it's for the record and for the people that are not. Yeah. Because we went back and forth. I had it up by 100. Our announced tuition is $18,901. $18,901. Thank you. So right. I moved that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Flora. Thank you, Jana. All right. Any further comments or questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. So we have approved our announced tuition. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to the facilities committee. Um, do we have an update from the facilities committee? <clears throat> yes. So we have a project timeline from Truex Collins. Um, that's, we didn't get our media proposal from them because we had a bunch of questions that they needed answered. So what we did at our last meeting was went through their list of questions and answered them. So, um, Jody and Flora, did that go back to them? Those questions? I don't think we have sent it yet. We, we have not sent it yet, Terry. Okay. Um, so, but they're still shooting to have a proposal to us by the end of the month so that we can yeah. pro um, provide you guys with it at the next meeting in February. So right now the timeline is mid 2029, which, you know, we kind of all in the beginning thought it would be a five year kind of projected plan. So, and they came out with about the same mid mid year, 2029 completion. So. And so what will they be coming back with? Is it a feasibility study? Is it what, what, what's the, what's the work that they're coming back to us with next month? You think? Um, it's going to be, I think a multiple of things. Okay. <laughs> right? Um, but yes, uh, they're going to come back with, you know, what, what would be, what it would be, what it would take from them and um, Lavalley, whatever that name Preston. of that company is. Yeah. That they're working with to, to help us, you know, figure out what's the, what's our site options, where that kind of thing, the feasibility of it. Yes. And then um, I think some other options that we've talked about with them. So, and the cost for contracting with them to do this. Right. That's exactly, that's what we need, right? We need to know what they're going to charge us. So, and if, and I think they're going to break it for us a little bit because there are things we may not need them for and things that we might need them for. And so we can, we have some flexibility there. Yeah. That's exciting. Thank you for that update. Any questions? I was wishing to have more for you this month, but, um, you know, at least we've got some good conversations going on. So, 
definitely. All right, thanks, Terry. Um, all right, next up for our committee updates, um, program quality. There's only one committee. There's only that's the only committee that's left, and um, <laughs> we spent some time talking about um, we're out of compliance in electrical technology because we're over enrolled. And so we've made a motion and it was seconded by Lyman and we unanimously voted to make a recommendation to you all to accept the consequences of being out of compliance in order to maintain the current enrollment in electrical technology for the 2023-24 school year. So it's just the remainder of this year. And so all of our students are being very successful and we don't want them not to be able to participate, to have two students be unable to participate. We're bumped over the amount, um, even though we've broken it into two groups, the co-op students into two groups, it still takes us over the you know, allowable amount of students. But for the remainder of this year, if the state allows us to, we would like to be able to accept the consequence and hope that it doesn't interfere with our funding. We need to determine whether or not it would, right, Jody? But if you would all help us to agree to maintain the program as it is now, because all, as I said, all of our students are being highly successful. Thanks, Jana. Go Guy? What, what are the potentials, Jody? Good question. So first, I just want to say that we, we needed to make a proposal to the state um, at the end of the last year around how co-op would work. And in our, our reading of the co-op requirements, it was our understanding that we couldn't have more than 21 students in a program on a given day. We didn't understand at the time that we couldn't enroll more than 21 students in what is called a hazardous occupation. And when the state reached out, at that time we thought, well, potentially students might not be successful, they might leave um, because we had to fix this for semester two. That was the recommendation from the state or that we might be able to find an additional instructor for the program. We were not able to find an instructor that could take on the co-op students alone. And when I reached out to Ruth to ask what the uh, consequence for non-compliance would be, she stated she would get back to me. And I still haven't gotten that information. So she first she said Friday, and then she told me it would be sometime this week. So I don't have what that would be. If it is not going to impact funding, I would like to see us not not um, punish students for our misunderstanding and for us to be able to say, yeah, we're not going to. Now we understand that, although I'm not sure electrical falls under the hazardous occupations based on the documentation I've been researching. But we understand that you're saying it does fit under that and that we cannot enroll more than 21 students in that. And when we do have 21 students, total enrollment, counting co-op and our regular students, that we need to assign a lab assistant there 50% of the time. We have done that. We have a lab assistant in there every time they're over 16, which is whenever co-op students are there. We split those co-op students, so half of them come in on Monday, the other half come in on Friday. So we thought we weren't breaking any rules because we never had more than 21 in the program at a time and have since learned from that. So my hope is that we can say, We've learned our lesson, we won't do this again, and keep those students, not punish them for our mistake. So we hope the news is not too shocking. Ashley? Is, is the concern that we would not get some funding that we're getting or that we would like have to pay a fine? Is that not that we might have our program like I don't know, suffer in some way, like they wouldn't allow it or something. What it like, what are the potential actual fallout of that? We discussed that a little bit as a committee. We don't really know because Ruth didn't have an answer. She was needing to seek information. 
Thanks. But it, it's also one of our programs that's highly enrolled. That's the problem. It's kind of a good problem to have when you think about how we would like all of our programs to be at, at a level. You know, unfortunately, this just kind of tipped the, tipped the top. And it sounds like they were being creative. Oh, sorry, sorry, I was just saying no, it sounds like ahead. they were being creative, making it work so that more kids could be in it. So right. And ensuring the the intent, I'm sure, which is safety right. and number of adults per student. It sounds like you guys are are doing that. Um, we are. Uh, Lyman? Uh, our, our discussion was certainly, you know, it, if there's an existential uh, punishment, then we, we don't recommend that, you know, of, of destroying the program. But if it's a, a, a small thing that we can get away with, then we recommend it. Great, thanks, Ashley. Is your is that an old hand, or are you? You good? Okay, uh, Guy. Yeah, I would I would commend the committee for making the recommendation, and also commend the staff for, you know, if they didn't know they were breaking the <clears throat> rules, uh, they certainly succeeded at not knowing that they weren't breaking the rules. So, you know, uh, I'm fine with it. I mean. You know, you guys have taken a look at it. Uh, we'll take our punishment. Is the are the students in unaffected? The um, argument is that if they had to come back, if we for whatever reason had not trained them well enough, and they all had to come back into program, we then could not incorporate them. So we couldn't end up with 23 students in that program without an additional instructor. We have had one of those students that was out on co-op had to return, actually two of them because they were injured, which is the first time that's happened. And we were able to cover the program when those students were in it and they were able to be in it throughout the week. So we kept a lab assistant there the entire time when that happened. I don't anticipate that we're ever going to have all seven of them back in there with our 16 first years. But seven is the co-op students that we break up into two separate groups. Um, Ashley? I just want to say that I also support it. I think we should vote on it because it seems like an easy one for me. Oh, it should be. Great, thank you. Sonia? Um, I support keeping this, the, you know, accepting the consequences. I'm just concerned about voting on something that we don't know what the consequences are yet. That's my concern because if we all say, sure, we're willing to take the consequences and they come back and say, oh, you know, and it's something awful and we're all like, oh yeah, we don't really like that. I feel like we're uh, putting the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart. I guess the cart usually goes, uh, yeah. So that would, that's my concern. Yeah, I wonder if we, um, we want to recommend continuation of existing practice while we wait to find out from the AOE. But can we also add that we want to work as hard as we can not to jeopardize anyone's position in that program? Yeah, definitely. Do, is that, do you want to make that motion, Jana? I, I, I'd like to make that motion. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so the motion is that as a board, we would like to recommend to the administration that they continue existing practices and not change the enrollment in electrical. And then um, maybe next month we will have an answer as to what any potential consequence would be. And then we can vote on that next yeah. month. Okay, right. and, and that we want, we as a board feel strongly that we want to do everything we can to um, not impact the students who are currently in the program. Right. Okay. That's first and primary, you know. First Great. and primary. Yeah. I'll you. second that. Thanks, Ashley. All right, any further questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Stephanie, did that make sense? Were we able to articulate that in a way that worked for you? Okay. Yeah, so so for the motion I have on a motion, and who did the, was Jana, were you the first motion? Yeah, I was the first motion. 
Um, the board unanimously voted to continue being out of compliance in order to maintain the current enrollment in the electrical technology with the decision regarding enrollment on consequences of the agency of education. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, Guy? Yeah, I'll just make an editorial comment to add to my frustration of some of these little nuances that seem to get in the way of, you know, trying to grow programs, you know? I mean, I don't want to put anybody in a hazardous situation, but, you know, don't we have bigger mm -hmm. things to worry about? You know, I'll just, I'll just mention that, you know, and I'm probably off <laughs> base that, and I apologize. Not at all. Thanks, Guy. Uh, Lyman? Um, guy to that point, um, I think it's really important to understand that we have um, 19 and is it 19 one day and 20 the other day? Yeah. And the and the cap is 21. So we're not we're not trying to shoehorn more kids in than are supposed to be in the in the room. We're not, you know. I thought that was really important. Um, but and that we're adding four and three co-op kids to that count. Well, to keep, to stay yeah. under, right? That's why we have 2019. Yeah. Um, on on another note for Jenna, do you want to talk about the design and fab or do you want me to do that? Well, go ahead. Okay. So um, the other discussion we had was talking about um, adding programs and putting programs on hold and that we had discussed putting design and fab next year on hold. Um, and Jody, do you want to explain this other part of it? And then we can go back to what we'd like to do. <laughs> Let's see if I know which uh, this other part was. <laughs> the the, uh, the funding ah. for next year. So we're tr I need to really look into Perkins funding because we are in a CLNA year, Comprehensive Local Needs Assessment. And so we need to look at program size, scope, and quality as part of that. And we need to make sure that um, any program that's in three years not meeting the total numbers, whether that's going to impact our Perkins funding. So if it is, then that, that, could, make, that could make the decision for us. Um, basically, we also might want to take into account, and this is what we talked about, the fact that we've just had a transition in that program. And so although we only have the two applicants that are currently in the program who want co-op and no first round, first choice applicants for the program, we have second round applications opening up next week. And with the new instructor and um, a little bit stronger support, actually voices from the granite industry now weighing in, do we want to give the opportunity for that program to try to see if they can get enough students to roll next year? Um, so, and we were talking about basically the numbers. And so to be like where it needs to be, we should be at eight next year. That would be six students in the first year plus the two co-op. So we, we need to get at least six students to apply and potentially be accepted. We want to always grow our programs to a point where we have the opportunity for the instructor to really select for the, the program and not have to take everybody. And that was one of the, the struggles with natural resources in the past was that students were not getting into other programs. So then they were applying to natural resources because they just wanted to be at the center, not because they were interested in it. And that led to some behavior problems and other issues for that program as well. So trying to figure out do we do we move forward and allow a new instructor in these changes to try and fill the program for next year or at least get it to that eight total or do we pause it and then what implications does that have for the two students currently in the program that would like co-op i'm not sure we can run the program a uh, co-op without a program um, so those were the the conversations we had and we left it at I'm going to find out what impact will this have on our Perkins before we make a decision. But because that's going to take a little bit of time, that means that we're going to give our new instructor the opportunity to try to get some 
folks to apply for second round because it starts next week. Which is what he would like. Yes. And uh, Jody, you had said that um, as far as our budget goes. Um, we um, so we had kind of swapped in our budget welding for design and fabrication. It feels like we might have the ability to do both. Um, depending on how our audit comes back, our early numbers are feeling pretty good. So there's a potential that we could do both. It's going to put us right on, right on the limit. But I think we also agreed as a committee that we need to have some checkpoints along the way. So find out what the Perkins funding issues might be and also check in to see how many applicants do we have in this second round and where do, where do we have a decision point? That's kind of what we need to know is what is our decision point and when. So it's to be continued. Yeah, and we also know that welding is one of the industry needs. And we have 30 applicants. So wow. when you have two co-op applicants for one program that's in its moving into its third year, albeit with lots of changes, or you have a new program with no teacher, no marketing, and we've got 30 applicants. That's why we were making that recommendation originally. Great, thank you. And you guys don't need a motion for this piece, right? Come on. Do we need a, we don't, okay, we don't need a motion. I had put action on the agenda thinking we might end up needing it, but because of the committee decisions, we don't. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sonia? No? <laughs> You're good? Okay. All right, great. Thank you for that work. A um, couple of good problems to have, it sounds like, but yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, next up would be our negotiations committee and we do have um, an executive session later on in the agenda to update folks on that. So we'll, we'll move on to, um, great. So we're looking for um, a motion to approve our FY25 Center Vermont Career Center School District budget and warning. So this is um, the budget and warning and then a separate vote or a separate nomination for our ballot language that'll go to all 18 towns and then our annual meeting warning. Uh, Jana? Till the warning needs to be changed to identify Lyme and two of the warnings have me as the vice chair and we need to change that so that it goes to Lyme. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. Uh, Terry and then Sonia and... No, no I'm not. Okay. So if the at-large director, is it just a one-year term? This, there's been so much confusion since I came on. Um, I filled in for, you know, until March, then I was voted in for one year and now it's a revote. So I thought it was a three year term. That's why I decided not to run. <laughs> it is so, three year. Thank okay. you. Yeah, you're welcome. And Sonia? Uh, my question is, and maybe I'm not understanding this, it says to the article one says to elect two members to the Central Vermont Career Center, but there's only one bullet. So is, are you really only looking for one member? Yes. I okay. think, yeah, I yes. think we have. It was probably one. from last year. Okay. And I think that also... Uh, that was correct on the official ballot. And then it was also on the voting by, by Australian ballot. Um, it says to elect two members that's at the very top under article one, and that should just say one member. And then under article two, there's, it's talking about um, the, um, meeting informational meeting and it says february 26 2023 great catches thank you sure
Sonia, right. can you help me? I'm not finding the February 26, 2023. So it's page, uh, it's after yeah. you found it. it. You got it? Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right, so do we have a motion to approve the budget and warning with those edits, those corrections made? I'll make that motion. Okay, thanks, Ashley. <laughs> uh, do I have a second? Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, thanks, Terry. Okay. Any other comments, questions, corrections on the budget and warning? All right. Oh, Lyman. Is is Tina still the clerk for next year? She's the clerk right now, but she she was very clear with us that she did not want to continue. I just didn't know if on the warning. I guess she would be on there anyway, right? She's the clerk right now, so she has to sign it. Yeah. All right. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. So we have approved the budget and warning with those corrections. Um, next up is the ballot language. Jody. Now that you have approved them, please make time to come in in the next two weeks to sign off on the signature pages. Okay, so you need wet signatures from all the board members. I believe we do. I don't think we can use DocuSign for this. Okay. Any, anytime? Anytime we're open or right. as scheduled with Michelle okay. or I outside of open hours. Okay. Okay. What time are you guys there in the morning? I'm there here at seven and oh. we're usually here till four. Okay, great. Thank you. Are you guys open Monday? The 15th? Okay. Yes, we have professional development that day. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thanks. All right. Next, the ballot language. Does everyone, has everyone had a chance to look at the ballot language? Do we have any questions or updates on that one? Just my changes. Okay. Great. Thanks, Jana. All right. Um, do I have a motion to approve the ballot language? Moved by Jana. There a second. Second. Thanks, Ashley. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. All right. And last, we need our FY25 annual meeting warning approval motion. And this will go, this gets published. Um, does this get included in the annual report or anything like that? I can't remember where else this goes to get the warning out. Published in the Times Argus, maybe? Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the warning? So moved. Thank you, Laura. A second? Second, Guy. Thanks, Guy. All right. Any further comment, questions? Okay, great. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Thank you. And thanks, Jody and Floor and Michelle for working on all that. Um, next on our agenda is the March meeting date. So there's a few reasons why we've got to we've got to pick a special date for that. Um, and I think part of it is because of where town meeting falls. Um, and then also we need to um, get together to sort of re reconvene the board after elections and town meeting day. Is that right, Jody? So did you have a pr proposed date that might? <clears throat> I think that with the exception of Cabot, every other sending school would have been reorganized by the 18th. And so we would have our new appointments by then. Jason, do you know, is are you the fourth Monday or Tuesday? 
Yeah, I think it is the fourth. So my thought was that we could go with the 18th and Jason could just continue with us for that meeting. And then if he's not reappointed, the new person could join us in April and we would reorganize on the 18th with the exception of that one seat. Otherwise, I think we'd have to put it off till April and we can't do anything in March. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. Jason, is that okay with you? Yeah, I think that sounds okay. Okay. Look. Um, all right. So does everyone, um, does that sound like, it sounds like a good plan, right? Um, that gives plenty of time for other things to sort of shake out. Um, the 18th would be. <laughs> does that mean that Jason, that you have to run again for the board, your term just expired? Is about uh, to expire? Yeah, I think I have to run this year. Okay. And if he didn't, I think the the board itself could decide, right? I mean, not not Cabot specifically, but like MRPS could say, Jill, we don't want you to be our career center representative anymore. Or I could say, I don't want to. And then another MRPS member would get appointed. I think so that can happen too each year. I think we sort of re reconvene. So Monday, March 18th is our tentative March date. I'd say speak now or forever hold your peace, but it's exciting to think about March. I don't think that's April break or anything. That's too early to interfere with vacations too much. Okay. All right. Um, do you need us to have a motion on that or I think that's an organizational decision. I think we should be okay. Um, uh, Lyman? Could we uh, move the program quality committee meeting to the 18th as well then? Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, Lyman. <laughs> Jody, does that sound good? You've got that captured? Okay, great. All right. Thanks for thinking ahead on that. Um, all right, superintendent's report. These are always included in our packet and Jody walks through. It's always a great way to learn about what's going on at the Career Center. Um, so I didn't actually include the annual report in this because we just got our first draft back from Ravenmark. So I sent it out in an email this afternoon. So you can take a look at, at that at your convenience. And if you notice any, Sonia, if you notice anything, <laughs> please, please, I need more help with uh, editing documents clearly. Um, so just take a look at that at your own convenience and we'll have another draft soon because our teachers will have the opportunity to look at it as well. Um, we're back from break. We're hoping that we don't have any weather that in, impacts us negatively. Not happy about rain in the forecast, I can tell you that. Um, that was a really interesting event that happened prior to the December break is that um, with the rain that we had on that Monday, our Sunday Monday routine for a while was snow days or rain. And we ended up releasing kids from almost every single sending school as needed based on what the sending school was doing. So our Harwood kids left first because there were roads closing and they had, they might not get home if we didn't let them out. And, and we kind of went along with that and then sent home our staff after that hoping we don't see that on Wednesday, but I'm really nervous with the amount of rain that they're talking about um, for our region, for sure. Um, we have a record number of first round applications for our center next year, 291, 43 more than first round last year. And so that's really exciting. And also, as you know, kind of scary because we turned away 200 students last year. And so worrying about students who might not have get access, even though they really want to be with us. Um, all of our emergency services to students successfully completed their first 12 credit course, um, semester one, and they're moving into semester two in paramedicine with VTSU. It's really exciting, especially talking to Carl about it. Um, he is the lead on the Thursdays at the Williston campus, so he is also in charge of the 20 uh, Vermont State University students there as well. So they all work together on every Thursday um, when VTSU is in session up at the Williston campus and it's exciting. Every single one of our students, and so we have four in the program right now, it's the 
first official year of this being split out from EMS one, and they are all volunteering on ambulances, usually more than one. So we have folks that are on Berrytown, we have Waterbury, we have Randolph, we have Williamstown. They are they are out there serving. And if something happens to any of you, um, I hope it doesn't. And but the ambulance shows up, chances are one of our students might be on there. And so it's just I'm really proud of the work that they're doing and excited that we have this partnership and I hope that we can continue it. As you all know, Giuliano took the role as our new design and fabrication instructor, and it's great for the work that he's done in Barry. Um, we can see it, we can see examples of his work, which is wonderful. And his connection to the granite industry has helped us to get some notice from them and, and reinvigorated some talks from the granite industry and how to support that program, which is really exciting. Um, we're working on our comprehensive local needs assessment this week, actually, it, the team will meet. So thank you, Jana, for being a part of that group. And we're looking at the program of study analysis this week um, when we gather up. And so that's a series of questions that instructors filled out these documents last time around, and they just needed to update them this time, thankfully, because it was a, a really heavy lift. Um, and basically it's a lot of questions of whether you've met or, or not, um, our CLNA documents are public too, so you can certainly take a look at them or jump into those meetings if you want. That's on our calendar and the agenda is on there as well. And finally, we received delivery of our mobile home. It was not the one that we were originally promised. Um, it turns out that one couldn't be given to us. They didn't have it to give away. Um, so we received the mobile home from Johnson. It came out of Johnson, Vermont and it doesn't fit in our, <laughs> through our door into building trades. So it's sitting in the student lot um, here and all of our programs that are in the heavy trade. So building trades, electrical, plumbing and heating, they're all working on this together. Exploratory is getting involved as well. So Exploratory is gonna get some of the demo um, and some of the other exciting pieces. And they're all met today, the instructors, to talk about what's our timeline and how are we going to get this done and what is our plan. So our goal is to complete it um, in time for the close of the school year. The state would then ask that we sell it and that they get the 24000 that they grant gave to us in grant funds, gear funds, back and anything above and beyond that would go back into our programs. And we... If you remember the gear funds, when I talked about that, they gave them to us in September with like two days left to spend them. They had to be spent immediately, even though we didn't have the, the mobile home. We had no idea what we were getting. So we bought what we thought we could use in program and or on a renovation project. And knowing that we'd use some of that in program and then we'd be able to replace from our program funds. So that's still the plan uh, to do that. And I also have had continued outreach with Habitat for Humanity. They're building on Hill Street and they are going to look for um, support from us to do a loan through the Community Loan Fund. And we have, um, they shared with us the MOU they used with Randolph Tech. We've asked for a couple of changes to it to add um, background checks for the supervisors they have on site at the program. And we should be able to finalize that piece soon and then we'll bring you more information about that loan agreement when that happens. Jody, as this yeah. great collaboration happens between the different programs in the de designing and construction of this, will there be video work done the way we did for the solar work and the electric so that we can actually show how everyone's working together and collaborating and solving problems and thinking it higher levels and all of that great stuff. Absolutely, yes. Our Digital Media Arts 2 teacher was also in the, the meeting today and we are gonna document it, yes. Great. I guess I could have said, are we gonna document it and left it at that? Sorry. Um, the, the other thing that I linked there was um, in the past, I've shared with you some documents that the Vermont Association of Career and Technical Education Directors, VACTED, have shared with legislature, with the, the Vermont School Boards Association, with the Vermont Superintendents Association. So I shared with you the most up-to-date, the prioritized list of our recommendations from that APA study that was done last spring, just so that I'm 
continuing to share. I wasn't sure if I'd share this with you yet. So that is the most up-to-date version of what the CTE directors recommend and what we're pushing the legislature for. Great, thank you. Guy? Jody, thanks for that report. I just want to make a couple of comments. Um, first of all, I was able to watch the uh, destruction of the uh, Hill Street property this weekend and it's now level and uh, looks like things are ready to rock and roll um you know and the what was that, what else was i going to say oh you know I, at open house i had a discussion with the ems individual and, and he is amazing i mean i cannot believe the amount of work he has done you know not only for the program but for the you know, for, for the issue, you know, and I had an opportunity to speak with a, with a student and, and she was amazing. Uh, so kudos to that. And, you know, hopefully Phil appreciates the fact that we're going to be rebuilding that, um, you know, that, that, that home, you know, I mean, quite frankly, I don't even know if you can buy a trailer for $24,000 right now, you know, renovated. So, we probably will make money on that project is my guess but so thank you hope so any questions or comments on the superintendent's report i'd like to make a motion that the board gets to come the next time culinary is having a cheeseburger making competition because that looked amazing and i was very <laughs> envious <laughs> That was pretty amazing. Ashley? I just want to thank Jody. That was a great report. And um, I really appreciate the thoughtfulness. The kids are going to be off site. They're going to be on a job site. You got to make sure those people have had their background checks because they do have access. So, you know, thank you. And it sounds like a lot's going on. Yeah, thank you very much. Awesome. All right. Just get back to the top here. Um, so Jody, was your VACTED? That's the legislative update, right? Those are sort of the key points. So there's statewide calendar, non-competitive funding, um, adequate support from agency of education. Um, yeah, some good recommendations in there. We should all talk to our legislators about it too. Um, oh, a, a building and future growth planning. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, uh, Guy? Sorry, Jill. No, go ahead. One last thing I forgot to say. Uh, it was a little heartening to hear, I think it was the chair of the education committee, but I'm not sure, to talk about the amount of money that's needed in school construction for you know the next however many years uh you know i can't remember the name of the individual but certainly made some news and um you know the amount of money is eye popping but you know hopefully the career centers are you know part of that issue Yeah, definitely. I think that's also where doing things like the Hill Street um, project or the and the mobile home renovation, those, you know, it's literally giving back economic, you know, positive impact from the career center and the students there. So um, yeah, and a lot of it's deferred maintenance too as well, right? They haven't done school construction funding since, I mean, I think it's been at least a decade, but the needs it, remain. It, it was 07. It was 07. Okay. Yeah. Long, more than a decade. Yeah. My kid was born in 07 and she's 16. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you, Jody, very much. Um, and I know Jody's very good about letting us know if she does get called in to testify. I keep an eye on the calendar. Um, but if there's and if there's anything else we can do to help, like I definitely think we want to share these with our um, with our lawmakers and have them hear the same the same messages. Um, Floor?
I can't hear floor. Can you guys? I just see black and I don't hear. Okay. You want to try again, floor? We couldn't hear you. No. Nope. All right, well, we could move on in the agenda and then Flora, if you want to try to maybe, oh wait, maybe she's coming back. If you want to try to call in. Oh, oh there you sure are. What, huh? Not sure what happened. I'm still, it's like some, it's a, the internet. I plugged it in and now I unplugged it and worked. I don't know. I just wanted to share that thanks to Jody's work at Scott Fires. There's been a smaller group that has been meeting also to try to move along the work and the lobbying for uh, changes for the Career Center. Tomorrow is the first meeting. We're actually meeting with uh, Jennifer Piscatelli, who is the AP, APA consultant uh, that did part of the group to sort of sort of plan the next uh, the next phase. We're going to review all of the recommendations again. From, from from the report and review the current scope and timeline to see if we can make sure that we can move the work uh, along and, and try to have an ongoing advisory group to make sure that through the legislative session, we can have a bigger impact if, if possible. So I just wanted to share that uh, with you. And yeah, and Scott is gonna be part of this group. They, I don't know how they decided, but it was just started the group and then Jennifer is going to be the one uh, doing the group, and it's just two meetings. Great, thanks. Any further questions or comments on that piece? Okay, great, thank you. Uh, next up, Jody, do you have a staffing and personnel update? I do. I sent a resignation email that I received over the weekend to you. It is our literacy interventionist um, has, he did not return the contract. So we were under a letter of intent until we uh, agreed to that CBA in December. And um, then the contracts went out, they were due in Thursday, January 4th by 3 p.m. Uh, that individual did not return theirs uh, signed. They had asked for an extension and I had said no because they were under a letter of intent already, so that already was committed to the school year. Um, it sounds like they've been looking for jobs and they requested to be let go or to resign. And as I've said before, and I said it with the last resignation that we got a few weeks ago or last meeting, um, I don't want someone who is unhappy here forced to stay here. So I recommend that we accept that resignation. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All right, thank you. Sadly. All right, um, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, all right, thanks for sharing. Does that mean you'll be posting that position this school year? Okay. Yes, we would like to fill it and we still also have the STEM position open and and we're thinking about renaming them because they're really supporting their embedded support and so maybe if we rename them that will help get some folks interested to we, we want to make sure that our posting represents well what that individual is doing i'll also send them the exit survey so that we could get that information from them great thank you all right any further questions on that um, next up on our agenda is the accounts payable, which we get mailed to us. Did anyone have any questions about the accounts payable? Okay. All right. Um, next up, I'm looking for a motion to go into executive session. It is on the agenda. If someone wants to read that motion. I'll do it. Um, I move that the board enter into executive session for the purpose of a negotiations update as premature general public knowledge. We clearly place the board and the association 
involved at a substantial disadvantage in the district I'd like to invite superintendent jody emerson into the executive session i'll second thank you thank you um any further questions discussion um all right and so floor you typically as the clerk take notes while because steph is not stephanie is not included in the executive session okay all right um all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. any aye. opposed Okay, so we are going to move into executive session. Um, all right, great. So now we're just moving on to just real quick, and I'm I don't know how we're an hour ahead. I I, I guess I rushed us. I sorry about that. We can definitely talk for another hour if everybody would like to. Um, Jody, go ahead. Um, maybe the timing was off on it from the last meeting. We usually end at eight, so we're only a half hour ahead. I do think it's important to let Sonia know that Giuliano was on the facilities committee. And I'm not sure if that's the committee she would like to be on or if there's another one, because um, we could certainly, there's space for you on any of them. There's plenty of people on facilities, so. I'm fine to just slide in wherever he was. It's only for January and February, so for now, so we'll see, <laughs> yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jody. I meant to mention that during our committee updates. Um, and of course, you're very welcome to join any other ones as well or sit in on anything. Um, but that would be great. That's a good that that one makes a lot of sense. That's great. Thank you. Um, all right. So this is the January meeting. So February, we will um, hopefully get an update on the AOE compliance question. Um, by that point, the, the budgets, the warnings will be out. Town meeting will be right around the corner. Um, and then in March, we'll meet um, at a different meeting time on March 18th. Otherwise, same, same time, same place. I think we'll be back in the building. We'll be able to meet in person for the February meeting, barring unforeseen events. Um, although we may not be able to park there if there's a mobile home taking up 10 parking spaces. <laughs> um, and then it looks like in June, we'll, we'll work on our board development and goal setting. Um, we'll continue the program presentations at our next, at our next meetings. Those are always a highlight. Um, does anybody have any other reflections or um, any other next steps we need to make sure that we've captured that we haven't already? Okay. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Guy. Thank you, Guy. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Jody, thank you so much for all your work getting the agenda together and everything. And Sonia, welcome and thank you for your incredible eye to detail. It's really appreciated. <laughs> thank you. Um thank you. Thanks for being here.